thanks for staying with us. You know, National Mosquito Awareness Week is coming up June 23rd, and not many places have more mosquitoes than we can get in South Florida. So to talk to us today about mosquitoes here and how to deal with them and how this community deals with them are a couple of people from the Mosquito Contro Control District. Jim David, the director of the Mosquito Control and Coastal Management Services, Management Services and also Sherry Burroughs. Burroughs, the Mosquito Control Manager. Thanks for joining us today, both of you. Good to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we ha haven't had you on before, and I think it's a good idea to let people know what our Mosquito Control District is, what you do, why you do it, why it's so important for community health. Uh, so it's, a, it's an important thing that you do. So let's talk about it a little bit. We'll start with, uh, with Jim. Uh, give us an explanation, the kind of the big picture. What is the St. Lucie County Mosquito Control District? Well, it's, it's basically a public health agency. It works uh, hand in hand with the health department. Um, and we've been around since 1926. We were actually originally called uh, a sanitary district. Um, and the purpose of the district uh, being formed was to try to control the mosquitoes on the barrier island uh, because we have so many uh, sort of higher high marsh areas along our coastal barrier islands. Uh, they are um, prime mosquito breeding habitats and used to put off um, billions and trillions of salt marsh mosquitoes and sand flies. So they formed the district in order to try to deal with that. Um, what we are right now today is an organization that manages those, those same marshes. Uh, we've adopted, adopted a different and new management strategies to incorporate not only mosquito and sand fly control, but also benefits to the wetlands themselves. So it's a form of ecosystem management um, in terms of our regular chemical controls. Um, that program began more or less in the late 1940s and early 1950s and has evolved uh, with a, di a change in chemicals to uh, those that are closely related to what is found in the chrysanthemum plant. And we also use chemicals uh, for uh, control of larvae um, that are found in nature as well, bacterium, fungi, things like that, that allow us to control um, mosquitoes uh, with using natural products. So we use natural processes to control wetland species of mosquitoes, and we use natural, chemi natural products called biorational chemicals to control breeding uh, in and around subdivisions and things like that. We also have a, a tip and toss program that we go into backyards and control uh, in backyards. Uh, we also have an aerial adulticiding and larviciding uh, set of programs. Uh, the aerial larviciding is done along coastal marshes also to control larvae before they have uh, turned into adult mosquitoes. And we control aerial uh, adult mosquitoes uh, aerially uh, along our western boundary, 95 and west. Uh, during periods in which uh, we may have uh, a an elevated disease transmission risk. Okay, um, so, so people might recognize, most people's experience is probably they see either a fogger truck come down the street or they've seen you on the tax bill. So let's talk about that. When they see you on the tax bill, I uh, <laughs> you, why, you, you probably get calls, why are you taxing me? Uh, explain how that works. Why is the St. Lucie County Mosquito Control District on a tax bill separate from everything else? Yes, no, I, I, uh, mosquito control uh, is a dependent de uh, taxing district. It is funded individually on the tax bill because the funds that are collected for that purpose are, are entirely for mosquito control and can only be used for mosquito control. The second part of that equation though is that we are not a countywide agency. We are only about the eastern two-thirds of, of the county, mostly the, the residential area. Yes, mostly the populated residential area. So the the taxes are not paid countywide for an organization that only serves part of the county. Very so the tax base that we actually obtain taxes from um, is a, uh, a lesser amount than the entire county tax base. And you charge a millage rate, just like the city does, and the county does, and the school board does, and the fire district does. Yes. You actually charge a millage rate. Right, 0.2036 at this moment in time. Which is? That's about 20 cents per thousand dollars of, of taxed value. And what, who is the board that sets what that will be, what that rate will be? 
The St. Lucie County Board of County Commissioners sits as the Mosquito Control District Board and we serve as a subordinate agency to the Board of County Commissioners. So the Board of County Commissioners sets our military. Got it. Okay, so there's the, uh, the structure of what this organization is all about. And then there's the day-to-day the -day work, going out and taking these mosquitoes on head on, and I guess uh, that's what, uh, Sherry, uh, you're heavily involved in that aspect of it. That's correct. Um, what do you do to go out there and, and stop mosquitoes? How do, you, how do you fight them? They're, they're all over the place. They're so natural to Florida. Where do you begin? Right. Well, we have a team of inspectors that that is their job is to go out and they look for breeding sites. They look for larvae and treat it as necessary while they're there. Um, we also have the tip and toss program that Jim has referred to. Uh, we're looking for standing water around uh, residential areas that maybe, and it doesn't take that much water to breed the mosquitoes. And so when we do get household complaints that come in or service requests that we like to call them, um, uh, lots of times they're, they're right there within the owner's yard and they don't realize it. They're in pot containers that may just have, you know, a quarter of an inch of water, uh, clogged rain gutters with a leaf material is great habitat for them. Um, we found them in wheelbarrows, buckets, anything that will hold water, children's play toys that, you know, for the sand on the beach, the hold water they breathe there. Even so. small little ca containers, cups, little toys upside down, just enough water. Just something that has enough water to breed and that can be a, enough of a pest and could potentially cause disease outbreak if those, those are, are vector species. So. And that's actually what prompted us uh, to, to get you out here on the program is uh, people do call us from time to time, hey, these people are in my yard. And that's Absolutely. what you call your tip and toss program? Yes, and we were actually doing just recently in the Port St. Lucie area, we had an imported case of dengue. Um, the health department we communicate with on Let's a... Let's back up on that. Dengue is what? Dengue fever. A fever, an illness. Uh, and it's an illness. Okay. And um, go to the symptoms that may require hospitalization. Um, the health department is notified that there is a imported case or potential case, suspect case is what we really, and we get, they communicate with us and tell us within a, a geographic area from maybe street A to street B, and then we will conduct a 1500 foot swath from that location and go household to household because we want to ensure that there's no breeding opportunities for any mosquitoes than to further transmit the Be virus. Because if somebody has that illness and a mosquito bites that person then they can spread it to others. Within a certain amount of time so if they're an imported case would be if someone travels outside the U.S. they get bitten they come back to the U.S. come back home and they start having symptoms within three to four days they can be they're susceptible if they get bit by our local mosquito then that mosquito has a potential to transmit that disease to others so that's our concern making sure there's no breeding sites available for these mosquitoes okay so are your crews clearly marked and labeled and uniformed how do people know yes. uh, that this is legitimate uh, that they should what, what should they be looking for right all of our inspectors are in uniform their names are on their uniform with the county logo white shirts khaki pants um, some have caps, some don't, um, but usually we'll approach the door, um, tell us why we're there, we're there looking for breeding sites, and if they have any questions, um, they can contact us. Okay, so tip and toss is one system. I think everybody's probably familiar with the fogger trucks that drive down the street. Absolutely. And that uh, that's sprays a chemical that kills the flying mosquitoes or the larvae, or how does that work? It, the adult mosquitoes, yes. Uh, because uh, that's the common one. Now, it's always a good idea for people to stay away from any chemical that's needless, but uh, for people who might be concerned about that, I think you were mentioning, uh, Jim, natural products. Uh, right, M most of our chemicals uh, for adulticiding out of our fog trucks will come from uh, formulations that are generated from uh, the chrysanthemum plant chemicals. Okay. So they're, they're related, it, they're all natural products or or artificially produced natural products. Some of the carriers are related to saffron oil. Uh, some of the other oils that we use as, as sort of uh, uh, mixes to generate volume will be mineral oil. Uh, and then the larvicides include bacteria, include growth regulator hormones, include fungi. fungi. So it's, it's, these are all natural products that are found in nature that are used. When we put out the aircraft to do emergency spraying on the western boundary, that's a chemical that is sort of the old class. 
the original class of organophosphates and it's not that's one of the reasons why we don't use it on a regular basis it's it's meant for emergency use only and that's not as populated over there either yes we typically are spraying over on un unpopulated areas yes right. exactly so you use all these different tools and techniques and then do you measure somehow is there some way to know there are more mosquitoes or less mosquitoes in an environment is there something absolutely to track that? we have traps that um, we use mosquito magnets that are distributed throughout the county to collect we do daily traps and weekly traps so we are someone is actually counting mosquitoes to know what w which species we have what where are they located and what how much of the density so we know exactly where to target our treatments Glad you mentioned that about species because there was an article in the paper not long ago that some sort of pterodactyl sized <laughs> right. mosquito was coming to town here. Yeah, we're not we're not right. belittling the article but but actually this is a common mosquito in Florida. It's it's called the gallon nipper because it, it got a nickname for if it was a big mosquito it would drink a gallon of blood. But it's it's just a, a normal pasture land mosquito that comes off our in our hinterland the the inner lands that are all agricultural and it's not generally found in huge numbers and uh, is not really what we would consider to be uh, anything close to one of our major major pests so sherry uh, you as a mosquito expert is there any good to these creatures at all or are they just a menace is there any, do they serve any purpose <laughs> well, Typically, even, a, even a, a bee at least is going to pollinate a flower or something but right. is there any benefit to a mosquito at all well depends on I your can't perspective be the only person wondering <laughs> right. this question. Um, i think i think all, all life has a purpose somewhere that you know change kind of somehow, yeah, the, the problem is when when something um, overtakes everything else in the system you know termites eating your house down is one thing termites sitting out in the field someplace not bothering anybody is right. a whole different thing same with mosquitoes um, a salt marsh that's undergoing tides and putting off a few mosquitoes in its vicinity not causing a harm to anybody a salt marsh that produces a billion mosquitoes in a week that flies into downtown Port St. Lucie is probably not a good idea right. so so we, we, it's, it's not something, we respect, we respect the mosquitoes that we are controlling, just like we respect anything out there in nature. And we try to use nature as much to combat them and to get them to be where they should be and not, okay. and not necessarily biting people. We've got a link to your website from our city webpage, cityofpsl.com. Mm -hmm. uh, but your website, if somebody uh, wants to go check it out and learn a little bit more, what would that be? Well, stlucieco.gov uh, forward slash mosquito or just stlucieco.gov, uh, which will take you, uh, you can get into our site from the basic county website by clicking on government and then mosquito control. Right, and you have a lot of information that people can find out what kind of chemicals, Sherry? That Absolutely, the chemicals, the material data safety sheets, um, which talk in more detail about the chemicals and their safety. Um, are all available online as well as the fogging schedules on when the trucks are dispatched. And um, just to note that that's our plan schedule. If, if it, the winds are higher than 10 miles an hour, we can't send the fog trucks out. If it's raining, we don't send the fog trucks out. So there's, there's some, that's our tentative schedule that's posted online. So there are some fluctuations is that, that weather dependent. Is that schedule planned on a regular recycling recurring basis or do you plan it based on need? A mixture of both. Um, we look at their trap counts, their trap counts to provide our justification as to where we treat. Um, also, resident complaints or service requests, if we're having a lot of requests, the inspector will go out and if we need to dispatch a truck based on their results of their inspection, then we can do that okay, that way. And you can find out those schedules on your website. Yes, Absolutely. Uh, we, we do not have a collection trap in every zone that we treat. What we have is a collection trap contiguous with or touching all the zones that we can legally treat from that trap information. So we tend to mix and match different traps with different zone treatments to try to come up with and respond to public requests for service and things like that. So during the summertime, I was, <coughs> for example, if a public request comes in to spray, if we don't have the trap counts to be able to justify that spring, which is a legal requirement, not just one we're making up, then we, ha we will go to that person's house to try to find out if there's a way we can suppress that, that control. 
So we, we, are, we essentially have 100% response to any call that we receive. Okay, we either great. spray with the trucks or we go to the site. All right. Well, thank you for your time. We appreciate you both coming in here. Thank you. Thank you. Jim David, Director of St. Louis County Mosquito Control District and Erosion District. <laughs> we'll talk about erosion on a different day. Okay. Come back and bring you back for that. Yeah. And also Sherry uh, Burroughs, <laughs> sorry, That's okay. uh, Mosquito Control Manager and uh, relatively new to this district here. Absolutely. But certainly knowledgeable about mosquitoes and how to deal with them. She has a lot of experience. Glad to have you here. And, Thank you. Uh, you know, it's, I guess, a constant thing that has to be addressed and uh, taken care of. But both of you being here helps people understand what the Mosquito Control of this district is about and why you do what you do. Thank you, Thank you for inviting us. We appreciate it. Yes. All right. And we'll be back after this quick message.